Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Amjad Ajum and I'm a third year medical student. And today I will be giving a biochemistry lecture. It's about uh, GAGs, proteoglycans, and glycoproteins. Um, now, guys, this lecture was um, given by Dr. Rasul. Uh, to be honest, he's one of the, my favorite, favorite doctors. Uh, he explains re really well. But there's one problem. I know that um, Dr. Rasul's lectures are very condensed, I would say. It has a lot of words and and yeah, so my job here today is to make it easier for you guys, inshallah. Um, here's my number and my email. So please, if you have any questions, uh, you can, uh, you feel free to um, contact me. So, bismillah. So let's uh, let's first start by breaking down uh, breaking down those words. What is glycosaminoglycan? So glycosaminoglycan is basically a the fancy word of saying a long chain of carbohydrates. So it's basically a long chain of carbohydrates. The second um, uh, topic for this lecture will be proteoglycans. So proteo is referring to proteins and glycans is referring to the glycosaminoglycans, which are the GAGs. I will, uh, uh, for the, um, late, uh, for later for in, the, in these slides, I will just say GAGs instead of glycosaminoglycans. So the proteoglycans, proteo is referring to proteins and glycans are referring to GAGs. So basically when, when you take this GAG, okay, and you add a protein to it, it's now called proteoglycans. Now the third topic would be glycoproteins, um, also glycomines, Carbohydrates and proteins and yeah, glycoprotein. So they are basically uh, carbohydrates attached to a proteins by glycosidic bonds. Right. Now, for introduction, I would go to this um, this diagram here. Before that, let me show you the objectives. So we will talk about GAGs. Again, what are GAGs? GAGs are long chains of carbohydrates. Okay. Uh, proteoglycans, basically when we add a protein, so when we add a protein to a GAG, it's now called proteoglycan. And then uh, after that, we will talk about um, some diseases called mucopolysaccharidosis. Those are caused by accumulation of GAGs. And lastly, we will talk about the glycoproteins, which are basically carbohydrates attached to a proteins. But let me talk about this picture here. So we have an epithelium here, group of cells making a tissue, whatever tissue. We have integrins and uh, this red line is the basement membrane. This is capillary here, okay? And what we are concerned with in this lecture, we will focus on this area here. You see this area that I'm drawing on? This is the extracellular matrix. Now this extracellular matrix contains a lot of things. Now. Um, one of them are the GAGs, the glycosaminoglycans. It contains also the proteoglycans. So let's break it down. First of all, let's talk about the basement membrane, the red thing here, and also uh, the red thing on the capillary also, okay? So the basement membrane contains something called integrins. Integrins basically are adhesive molecules that attach the epithelium to the basement membrane. Um, the basement membrane also contains type 4 collagen and proteoglycans. What are proteoglycans? GAGs with a protein. Well, um, the same thing here. Um, the, uh, the basement membrane here at the bottom, this one, this is the basement membrane. Okay. Now this one, you see the proteoglycan here. You see the, the, the vertical blue lines that I'm drawing right now. Those vertical blue lines are the GAGs, the glycosaminoglycans, and the horizontal uh, blue lines are the proteins. So again, when we have a GAG attached to a protein, it's called proteoglycan. Now, let's talk about the ECM. This is the extracellular matrix. Extracellular matrix, this is what we are concerned with in this lecture. So we will talk about um, the glycoproteins. We will talk about proteoglycans. Also, again, in, there's integrins in the uh, in the extracellular matrix, which attach the fibroblasts to the um, structures in the ECM. Now, what's the function of the fibroblasts? It's to synthesize the extracellular matrix, basically. Now, this is the same. This is the same. Um, again, 
um, we have integrins that attach the epithelial cells to the um, basement membrane. We have fibronectin and uh, actually only fibronectin and laminin. Those are those are glycoproteins, which we, we will talk about uh, at the end. And again, proteoglycans. This is the most important things that we are talking uh, going to talk about in this lecture. So proteoglycans, glycosaminoglycans, and glycoproteins. So let's start with the ECM. So the ECM, the extracellular matrix, it consists of GAGs, glycosaminoglycans. They are often covalently linked to proteins. So when a GAG, again, uh, is bound to a protein, now we call it proteoglycans. Now, make sure that it has to be covalently linked to a protein. So again, GAG, GAG, covalently bound to a protein, it will form proteoglycans. Uh, we also have um, elastin, fibronectin, and laminin in the ECM and the extracellular matrix. Uh, the extracellular matrix is the medium through which cells migrate during the embryonic development. Now, do you remember, guys, in your embryology lectures, when Dr. Paul uh, was talking about uh, cell migrates, neural, neural crest cells migrate from uh, this place to this place and so on. So when we have a cell um, that's want to, to migrate from point A to point B, the extracellular matrix is the medium through which this cell will migrate. So let's, let's imagine we have a cell, uh, this is point A, it wants to migrate to point B. The medium, the medium in which uh, this migration will be uh, will be uh, will be done, it's through the extracellular matrix. Um, it also here the last point they are saying that the ECM is also involved in uh, cell signaling, so signals to the surface of cells. So it's basically how cells are communicating with each other. Okay. Okay, we are done with this. Now, glycosaminoglycans. Now, glycosaminoglycans are located on the surface of the cells and the ECM, so they are found in both uh, of these, and also in vesicles. Their rigidity will provide structural integrity to cells. Structural integrity, we will talk about it. And also the passageways, again, the passageways for the cell migration. So the gags that are um, found in the extracellular matrix, we said that they are the medium for the migration of cells from point A to point B. Again, the same thing. Now. GAGs are called what? Hetero, or, or they are composed of heteropolysaccharides. Now, hetero means different. Polysaccharides means uh, long chains of carbohydrates. So, saccharide word means um, carbohydrates or sugars. Okay, so poly means many. Polysaccharides means many long chains of carbohydrates. Now, those polysaccharides are made up of long, unbranched polysaccharides. Okay, with repeating disaccharides in it. So disaccharides means uh, two uh, chains of carbohydrates attached to each other. And when we have those uh, repeating disaccharides, so let's say we have a disaccharide here too. Okay, two chains of carbohydrates attached to each other. And then when we have a repeating disaccharide, so two, 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 we will form a polysaccharide. And this polysaccharide is what will form the GAG. Now, those, um, those sugars or the disaccharides are important to know. You have to know the names. Now, in this lecture, we have a lot of chemical structures and so on, so you don't uh, have to memorize them. So you just have only to uh, know the names, okay? So the disaccharides units, which are the two um, long chains of carbohydrates attached to each other, they comprise of, they comprise of two sugars. The first one is, change the color because this is important. Um, the first one is acetyl galactosamine, so N-acetyl galactosamine, and the other one is N-acetyl glucosamine. So those are the first two, galactosamine and glucosamine, and glucuronate or glucuronic acid or iodoronate. I will show you the structures of those in the next uh, slides. So you can guys uh, get it, inshallah. But for now, you have to remember those names. So uh, forget the N-acetyl. Remember galactosamine, okay, here. Galactosamine and glucosamine. Um, it's actually either galactosamine or glucosamine. So on each disaccharide, okay, in each disaccharide um, 
uh, unit, it's either going to be galactosamine or glucosamine. In addition to the other um, monosaccharide, I would say, it's, it's going to be glucuronate or iodurinate or iodurinic acid. Okay, so the next concept is, you have to know guys that gags are highly negatively charged. So uh, gags are highly negatively charged and we will know the uh, importance of this uh, in the next uh, slide. So th this highly negatively charged gags, they, they will make them viscous. What does viscous mean? Viscous means um, lizage or it gives you uh, the lizage. So this high viscosity will make the gags less compressible. What does less compressible mean? It means that when there is a, let's say a synovial fluid in the joints, okay, let's see the, let's say the knee joint, it contains gags and also water or fluid. Now those gags are less compressible. It means that it will stay in the joint, in the synovial fluid of the joint. However, uh, the water will go out. So when, when someone is walking, exercising uh, and so on, there will be a high, I would say high pressure on the joint so when, the, when there is compression, the water will go out, but the gags will stay in. And, and, that, and why do they stay in? Because of the viscosity, because they are highly negatively charged. And so because gags are less compressible, they are ideal for lubricating fluid in the joints. What does lubrication mean? Lubrication means uh, no, it, um, it minimizes um, or minimize, yeah, minimize the friction between uh, the two bones or in the joint basically. Uh, I will repeat this concept in the next slides also. There's a good picture, so um, don't worry if you don't get it for now. But for this slide, please remember the, um, the uh, names of the sugars, okay? Five, the next slide. So this is the structure of the gags. Now, do you see this picture in the middle? This one is the disaccharide I was talking about. So let's read here. Uh, gags are unbranched, unbranched heteropolysaccharide uh, comprised of repeating disaccharides. And those are the disaccharides here, okay? Now, for the sugars, I told you to memorize. We have two types of sugars. It's either acidic or uh, amino sugars. The acidic sugars on the left here, okay? The acidic sugars, we have two of them. Glucuronic acid or adiuronic acid. What's the difference between them? But on the structures, you don't have to know them, guys, okay? Um, just to know the difference between uh, glucuron glucuronate and iodurinate. Uh, the difference is that COOH, this group here, this COOH will, um, or is outside. However, in the iodurinic acid, it's going to be inside. That's the only difference between them. And why do we call them acidic sugars? It's because of the, this group, COOH, it's an acid. On the other side, the aminic sugars, uh, also, we have two of them. We have glucosamine or galactosamine. So here's the first one, glucosamine or galactosamine. And why, do, why are they called amino sugar? Because of the NH2, the amino group. Now let's focus on the picture in the middle. This picture in the middle is a disaccharide compri comprised of acidic sugar and amino sugar. So each disaccharide have two long chains of, uh, of uh, carbohydrates. So this is the first one. And this is the second one. So those will form what by saccharide. So for each disaccharide, it has to be one uh, sugar from the acidic group and one sugar from the amino group. So no disaccharide can be made from or, or both of uh, glucuronic acid and adurinic acid. No, it has to be one from acidic and one from amino. Now those disaccharides in the middle, do you see this N? This N is the number of repetitions, the repeating disaccharides, those. So when those disaccharides are repeated, uh, let's say hundreds or thousands of times, they will form polysaccharides. Um, and those polysaccharides will form the gags. So this is the gag, okay? Uh, I wrote for you the acidic sugars, again, glucuronate or hydronic acid and amino sugars, glucosamine or galactosamine. So guys, do you get this? Um, do you get the structure of gags? because this is very important uh, to understand the next slides. Okay, great, five. So let's move on. Now, uh, I said previously that gags are 
highly negatively charged. Type. Let's focus on the uh, on the diagram on the left, on the right, sorry. This one, this man. So let's say that this man is exercising, jumping or running. Uh, let's go uh, zoom in into this joint, the knee joint. We are going to uh, the synovial fluid. So this is this uh, black circle is the synovial fluid. This synovial fluid contains water, okay, a fluid, and the green lines are the, uh, the GADs or the glycosaminoglycans. Now, in the state of compression, let's say this man is jumping, there will be a lot of pressure on the uh, on the knee joint. So what will happen? The water will move out from the uh, synovial fluid, okay? So the water will move out. And then what will happen? The gags inside here, uh, we said they are highly negatively charged. And because of that, they are viscous. They provide viscosity to the synovial fluid. And this, uh, what made them, uh, or what makes them uh, good lubricators of the joint. So um, when we have the, uh, the water out and the gags here, they will absorb the shock. So to minimize the friction between the two bones or in the knee joint, this ga those gags will absorb the, um, the uh, shock of the jumping, okay? So again, it will be, I think, more clear on the left uh, diagram here. So again, this is the synovial fluid. It contains water and gags. When, there's, when, when someone is jumping, there is a compressible state. It means that the uh, the water will go out from the sign of the fluid, okay? All water will go out. Now, when the water goes out, what will happen? The gas will provide the viscosity um, or it will give the resiliency. The resiliency means the uh, al -Muruna. Um So that's why uh, the, uh, the gags are good for lubrication to minimize the friction between the two bones or in the knee, or in the knee joint. And then when the person sits down, it will uh, he will re and when re uh, relaxation occurs, what will happen? The water will go in. The water will be back again to the synovial fluid. Why? Because the gags again, because the gags are highly negatively charged, and the negative charge will attract sodium. And then the sodium, whenever uh, sodium goes somewhere, the water will follow, and that's why the water uh, goes back to the synovial fluid. So um, uh, make make it a rule that when wherever the sodium goes, the water will follow. And the negative charge of the gags will attract sodium, and so the water will follow. And that's why the, uh, the water will go back to the synovial fluid. So again, uh, charge repulsion, uh, slippery when forced together. Um, the negative charge will attract the sodium, then the water follows. It will develop a swelling pressure, and it will resist compression. Okay, resist compression. Uh, here, they are talking about the residency of the synovial fluid and the vitreous humor. Residency means al moruna. So it gives moruna to the joints to minimize the, uh, or basically to lubricate the joints. Uh, it minimizes the friction between the two bonds to uh, prevent uh, pain. Synovial fluid are fluid that is found in the joints, like the knee. Vitreous humor is a fluid um, found in the eyes. Okay, uh, I think that's it for this slide. Yeah, again here, the relaxation, they are saying that uh, gags return to the original shape and then the rehydration, the water will come back to the, um, to the synovial fluid because of the negative charge of the gags. Fine. Now those are the introduction or the general information about gags. Now we will go um, into names of gags or different types of glycosaminoglycans. Now we will start with, so we have six types of glycosaminoglycans. You have to know all of these, okay? You have just uh, you memorize these six names and what is special for each one of them. So let's start, what is uh, the six type? What are the six types of gags? First of all, you have hyaluronic acid, this is number one. Bermatan sulfate, two, chondroitin sulfate, heparin, heparin, heparin sulfate, and keratin sulfate. So we have six of them. So what do you need to know for guys from these? 
sorry, the names, what is special about each one of them, and the, um, the, the types of sugars they are composed of. So each one of them have, uh, um, has a different type of sugar, the disaccharide uh, unit that we talked about. Now hyaluronic acid, uh, also called hyaluronan, hyaluronan, okay. It does not have a sulfate group and is not covalent. So the, the special thing about hyaluronic acid is that it's not covalently attached to protein. So it does not form a glycan because we said that a, a, a glycosaminoglycan, it will be attached to a protein to form proteoglycans, right? Proteoglycans. Now, the special thing about the hyaluronic acid, which is GAG, and no, it's not covalently attached to a protein. It does not have this protein. And so the this hyaluronic acid, HA for hyaluronic acid, it does not form proteoglycan, okay? Um, this is the special thing about hyaluronic acid. However, it is a part of non-covariantly formed complexes with proteoglycans called agricans. Um, agricans, there's a, a slide about them um, later on, so um, I will discuss it later. But for now, we have to know that hyaluronic acid, the HA, does not bind to a protein, so it does not form proteoglycans. However, it is a part of a proteoglycan. Okay, so it does not covalently bond to a protein to form proteoglycan, but it is a form of, um, or a component, I would say, of proteoglycan. Actually, actually, let me go to the, let me go to the uh, slide here. So here, do you see this hyaluronin? Hyaluronin uh, here, the HA, hyaluronic acid. Um, let me orient you here. So this is the agrican, also called the proteoglycan. This is proteoglycan, which we said is a gag, Plus protein. In this case, when it's uh, when it's attached to hyaluronic acid, it's called an agrican. So this agrican is non-covalently attached to a hyaluronic acid by a linker protein called hyal adherence. Uh, this attachment, um, um, so it's it's non non-covalently attached to the hyaluronic acid, forming the agrican. So I will discuss it later on. Okay, I will re-explain it. Let's just um, to show you the picture guy, okay? Right. Now, hyaluronic acid are very large molecules. Um, and that's why they can displace a large amount of water. Now, so the more water the gag can displace from the synovial fluid from here, the more water it can displace, the more, the, the, the better it is for lubrication. And so that's why hyaluronic acid can displace a large volume of water, which makes them a, an excellent lubricators and shock absorbers in the joints. Fine. Mm, okay, so now we will start with the six types of glycosaminoglycans. So glycosaminoglycans, first one is hyaluronic acid, HA. So for those six types, guys, again, uh, you have to know the types of sugars. And what are what um, what is special about each one of them? Starting with hyaluronic acid, hyaluronic acid is unsulfated, so it does not contain the sulfur group. It's not covalently attached to a protein. Again, there is no hyaluronic acid is the only glycosaminoglycan that does not bind to a protein. So again, no uh, proteoglycan formation. No proteoglycan. formation. Uh, hyaluronic acid is found in the synovial fluids of joints and the articular cartilage on the femur and the tibia. Uh, skin, vitreous humor, which is the fluid in the eyes, uh, ECM of loose connective tissue. Now, for the sugars of hyaluronic acid, we have two of them because we said this is the disaccharide, guys. Okay, this is the disaccharide. Now, this disaccharide composed of two sugars, two long chains of carbohydrates, right? So the first glucose, the, or the first, um, sorry, first sugar type of hyaluronic acid is called glucuronic acid. Uh, glucuronic acid. This one, glucuronic acid. And N-acetyl glucosamine. N-acetyl glucosamine. 
So when we have a glucuronic acid uh, bound to a glucosamine, this is called hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid composed of glucuronic acid plus glucosamine, okay? Now this is the disaccharide and you see the end here when we have a repeating disaccharides. So let's say we have a hundred of those. Now hundred of those of the disaccharide, okay? will form the polysaccharide, which is the hy hyaluronic acid in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Now, um, here they are seeing that these sugars, the glucuronic acid and the acid N-acetyl glucosamine, they are made in the cytoplasm. So let's say this is Oh, wait, okay, this is a, a cell. Here we have a nucleus in the middle and we have the cytoplasm here. Now those sugars of uh, hyaluronic acid, they are made in the cytoplasm and then they diffuse to the plasma membrane. This is the plasma membrane here. So they, they are made in the cytoplasm and then they will go to the plasma membrane. So after synthesis in the cell membrane, the hyaluronic acid will be secreted into the ACM. This is the ACM. So they will be secreted in the, um, the uh, cell membrane, and then they will be secreted to the extracellular matrix. Here's the extra. All of this outside the cell is the extracellular matrix. So what's important about hyaluronic acid? They are unsulfated. They are not covalently attached to a protein, so they will not form a proteoglycan. And the two types of sugars um, uh, making the hyaluronic acid are glycuronic acid, uh, glucuronic acid, sorry, and then acetyl glucosamine. But this is the first type of a glycosamine glycan. Let's move to the second one, but uh, chondroitin sulfate. Chondroitin sulfate is a gag. Now, the two types of sugars making the chondroitin sulfate are glucuronic acid and galactosamine. Here is it here. So here you have the uh, glucuronic acid and galactosamine. Galactosamine. They are the most abundant uh, gags and they are found in the cartilage. They, they are attached to collagen. They are found in cartilage, bone and heart valves and they covalently bound to a protein. When you hear this word, Covalently bound to a protein, what comes into your mind? Proteoglycan. So, because chondroitin sulfate, which is a gag, binds to a uh, protein, now we say it is, it's called proteoglycan. Um, so, that's it for chondroitin sulfate. You just have to know the two types of sugars, glucuronate and N acetyl galactosamine. And they are found in, that they are found in cartilage, and they when when they are covalently bound to a protein, we call them proteoglycans. The third type of gag, dermatan sulfate. It's all the same as uh, chondroitin, except that instead of glucuronic acid, we have hyaluronic acid. So this is the only difference between dermatan and chondroitin. So here instead of glucuronic acid, we have Hyaluronic acid. And that's it for the fourth type of gag, uh, the keratan sulfate. Now, keratan sulfate, what's the special thing about keratan sulfate? It is the only gag that is made of galactose. So, the two uh, types of sugars that makes uh, up the keratan sulfate are galactose and the glucosamine. Here you have galactose, galactose with um, glucosamine make the keratan sulfate. So this is the, 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 the special thing about keratan sulfate that they com comprise of galactose. Uh, they are found in the connective tissue, the cornea, uh, the cornea, the cornea. Uh, also in the bone, in cartilage, in cartilage, and it's also aggregated with chondroitin sulfate. This one, number two. It's aggregated with um, chondroitin sulfate. Let me show you the picture of this. You see here, this chondroitin sulfate. 
and this keratin sulfate, they are aggregated, aggregated which are you know, they are attached to, with each other. They are with, uh, together, okay? And this uh, black line is the protein. So this is a proteoglycan. I will talk about it later also. It's just to, uh, to show you the, uh, the aggregation of uh, keratin sulfate with chondroitin sulfate. Again, keratin sulfate is covalently bound to a protein. When you hear covalently bound to a protein, which means they form proteoglycans. So for, for this, for the proteoglycans, we said that hyaluronic acid, which was the first type, and now this is the only GAG or glycosaminoglycan that is not, um, that's not attached to a protein to form proteoglycan. So this is for the, now we are done with four types of GAGs. So what do you have to know? The types of sugars the, with the green uh, color. So please know, memorize these. And the uh, what's special uh, about every one of them. Now, let's move to the next types of GAGs. Heparan sulfate and heparin. So heparan, what are the two, what are the two types of sugars? Glucuronate and glucosamine. So those are the two types of sugars found in heparan sulfate, glucuronic acid, and N-acetyl glycosamine. Uh, the special thing about heparan that they contain, they are highly acetylated. So heparan sulfate is more acetylated, which means they have more uh, acetyl group, which is the acetyl group is, um, I think, CH3CO. You don't have to know this, okay? Just know that heparan sulfate is more acetylated. Uh, they are also found associated with a protein. Again, a gag with a protein, they form proteoglycan. So forming heparan sulfate and proteoglycan, they are found in basement membranes and components of cell surfaces. Now, the heparin, on the other hand, heparin, um, it has the same uh, types of sugars. Okay, so glucuronate, uh, glucuronate, okay, and glucosamine. So both of them have the same types of sugars, glucosamine. So what's so special about heparin? Uh, heparin is more sulfated. Yes, you have to know that heparin is more sulfated, it has more sulfur, okay? So component of uh, granules of mast cells, lining the arteries of the lungs, liver, and skin, okay? They are more sulfated than heparan, and this is the difference between them. Um, I think you guys took uh, him, him uh, block. So I think you might be heard, uh, you might uh, heard about heparin. Heparin is anticoagulant. Anticoagulant means they uh, inhibit, they prevent blood clotting or coagulation. Um, also, they are saying here that heparin is involved in uh, our immune system. So involved in immune system. And this is the picture of the two types of sugars of both heparin and heparin sulfate, glucuronic acid and uh, galactosamine, uh, sorry, glucosamine, okay? Glucuronate and glycosamine. And again, what's the difference between the both of them? Heparan sulfate is more acetylated. However, heparin is more sulfated. Okay, heparin is more sulfated, but they both have the same types of sugars. Okay, so now we are done with, we are done with GAGs. That's it guys. So just um, know the over the introduction at the first of the GAGs, where they are found, where are they found? In the extracellular matrix, and then um, know the the function of gags in the synovial fluids in the joints. They are for lubrication, which means they minimize the friction between the two bonds. Uh, also know the six types of uh, glycosaminoglycans, the, their names, the the types of sugars um, uh, making uh, the uh, the six types, and what is special about each one of them. So that's it about gags. Does anyone have any question about glycosaminoglycans before going to proteoglycans?
Okay, great. Okay, so let's move on to proteoglycans. So again, uh, let's break down the word again. Okay, so proteo means protein. Glycans referring to guts. Uh, yes, sure, Hannah. Okay, I will repeat this before moving on. Here, uh, it's going to be repeated. This concept is, uh, will be repeated in the next slides. But uh, for this uh, part here, they are saying that that hyaluronic acid is made in the cytoplasm. So I will draw a cell here. This is a cell. We have a nucleus in the middle. And this is the cytoplasm. Now, you know that cytoplasm uh, contains uh, ER, Golgi, and all these organelles. Now, those sugars, the, the, um, the glucuronic acid and the N-acetylic glucosamine, both of them are produced or, um, yeah, they are produced in the cytoplasm, specifically in the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so this, uh, these sugars, again, they are made in the cytoplasm here in the endoplasmic reticulum, and then they will go to the plasma membrane. Okay, they will go from the ER. So let me do an ER actually. Let's say this is, uh, I'm not very good draw in drawing this. Let's say this is an ER, okay. Now when, the, when these ER, the ER, you know that they contain ribosomes, right? The ribosomes, they form proteins. Oh, sorry, no, it's not. So, so again, again, so we have a cell and with a nucleus and cytoplasm, the cytoplasm contains the ER. And then when those sugars, they, they are formed in the cytoplasm, they will diffuse to the plasma membrane. So they are formed in the cytoplasm, then they go to the plasma membrane. From the plasma membrane, they will be excreted to the ECM. So anything outside the cell, anything outside the cell is ECM. So sugars of hyaluronic acid made in the cytoplasm of the cell, they will go to the plasma membrane. From the plasma membrane, they will go to the ECM. And then we have this actually here. We will have the hyaluronic acid and the, cyto and the ECM here. Okay, here. Uh, did you got it? Okay, great. Uh, do we need to memorize the structures of glucuronic? Uh, no, no, no. Um, no, you don't have to memorize any structure. Okay, guys, just know the names. So any structure you see here, you don't have to know anything about it, okay? Just, just know the names. Here, only the names, only the names. Also here, okay? Only the, ty only the names of the sugars. You don't have to know anything about the structure. Sounds good? Okay. Now we can move on to the proteoglycans. You're welcome. So proteoglycans, again, protein means proteins and glycans, they are referring to GAGs. So again, GAGs plus a protein, they form proteoglycans, except what is the exception of um, this rule or this uh, combination? Can anyone uh, type? What would be the answer? Exactly. Exactly, thank you. It's hyaluronic acid. You said that hyaluronic acid, they are not covalently bound to a protein, okay? They are not covalently bound to a protein. So they do not form proteoglycans. Five. Now let's talk about the structure of proteoglycans. Uh, I know it, it looks overwhelming, but inshallah it will be easy, don't worry. Um, I will, I will uh, explain the, the pictures. Um, and then inshallah it will be clearer. It's better than reading all these. But let's start with the structure of proteoglycans. Now we said that proteoglycans, they are composed of GAG plus a protein. Now, where's the protein in this, in this uh, image? It's right here, the blue thingy, okay? The, this is the protein core. And the, uh, do you see the, the on the, uh, left side, we have the, the GAG, okay, so this is the GAG, and this is the protein, okay. However, we have something in the middle. So we have a GAG, we have a protein. We said previously that those will attach to each other and they form proteoglycan. 
but uh, things get any yani, more complex here, more, uh, there's more details. So you have to know that there's something in the middle called tetrasaccharide linker or tetrasaccharide bridge. This um, bridge is made up of glucuronic acid, glucuronic acid, galactosamine, oh, sorry, galactose actually, galactose, galactose, and xylose, xylose. Now, those four uh, types of sugar or um, carbohydrates, they form the tetrasaccharide link, and this tetrasaccharide linker or bridge, it will, it will bind glycose amino glycan to a protein core. Excuse me, guys, one minute, please. Okay, I'm really sorry, guys. Uh, let's move on. So I was talking about the proteoglycans. Uh, proteoglycans are um, formed of a gag and a protein. Now we have something in the middle called the tetrasaccharide uh, bridge or linker. It is composed of four things, glucuronic acid, galactose, galactose, and xylose. Now the point of attachment of this uh, bridge, uh, it's attached to serine. This molecule here is called serine. So the point of attachment of the tetrasaccharide um, bridge, it will attach to serine on the protein core end, on the protein side. This is another picture. It's the same. Um, we have here an example of a gag, which is chondroitin sulfate. This gag will, uh, will bind with a core protein through a polysaccharide, uh, sorry, tetrasaccharide bridge. So this is the tetrasaccharide bridge. Tetrasaccharide uh, bridge is composed of glucuronic acid, galactose, galactose, and xylose. Now this xylose is attached to serine. Just know that the point of attachment of the bridge uh, is to serine on the uh, protein end. Again, this is the, do you see this chain here? This is the protein protein that is attached to the bridge and the bridge on the other side is attached to the gag forming proteoglycan. Is this clear? I thought like uh, explaining on images is much easier than reading all of this because yeah, this is all the same actually. Um, but here they are seeing that proteoglycans, the function, uh, uh, tissue organizers, they influence their activities. Okay, so something general. They, uh, they are involved in growth factors, adhesion and activation. The basic proteoglycan is composed of a protein, a core protein to which GAG is covalently attached. So you have to know the, that the bond between them is a covalent bond. And the point of attachment of the serine residue, um, Serine, like the amino acid, okay. Uh, basically, they are explaining this um, this attachment of xylose to serine. So yeah, it's basically the, the third and the fourth points are the same as uh, what I explained on the images. Okay. Now, we, can't, we came here to the, uh, to the agrican structure of a proteoglycan called agrican. Now, what is special about agrican? We have here the hyaluronic acid, the hyaluronic acid. Now we said that hyaluronic acid does not bind to a protein. So it does not form proteoglycan. However, in this picture, you have to know that hyaluronic acid here is a component. It's a component of proteoglycan. but it does not form proteoglycan. It's a part of it, but it does not form proteoglycan. How is it part of it? We have, so do you see this agrican? This agrican is the proteoglycan. It's also called proteoglycan. It's just another name because we have an exception here. This proteoglycan or the agrican is composed of, do you see the red lines? Those are the chondroitin sulfate. 
here, chondroitin sulfate. And the blue lines are the keratan sulfate. And the, 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 um, the black line in the middle is, is a protein. So again, we said when we have a protein attached to a gag, we have a proteoglycan, which, is, which in this case is called agrican. Why is, why is it called agrican, not proteoglycan? Because hyaluronic acid is uh, involved here. So hyaluronic acid, you see the, the green line in the middle? This is the hyaluronic acid. It is linked to so hyaluronic acid. Wait, let me add the page. Um, okay, so this hyaluronic acid is attached to a glycan, oh, sorry, agrican. Agrican, which is a proteoglycan, by something called Hyal adherence, Hyal adherence. How would you remember this? Hyal, they are referring for hyaluronic acid, adherence attaches. So uh, hyaluronic acid is attached to agrican by Hyal adherence, this one. Okay, the Hyal adherence, a link protein. Now the, the job of this link protein is to um, attach the agrican, the agrican here, to the hyaluronic acid, the green line. This is, this is done by hyal adherence or a link protein. Now, the absence of what happens if we don't have this link, link protein or the hyal adherence, the, the agrican or the protoglycan will not be able to bind to hyal, um, hyaluronic acid. So what will happen? So absence of hyal adherence leads to failure in anchoring Proteoglycans resulting in what a defect. We have we will have a defect in cartilage formation. There will be a delayed bone growth. They will uh, causing short limbs and craniofacial anomalies. So if we have a deficiency in this, deficiency in the hyal adherence, what will happen? Hy uh, hyaluronic acid will not bind to agrican. Therefore, um, a defects in cartilage formation and other abnormalities will occur. Um, that's it for this slide. Now, the proteoglycan functions. For proteoglycan functions, um, we have many of them, but this, the lecture uh, only mentioned two. So let's, uh, I will also start with explaining the image. So this green uh, thing is the proteoglycan. In this example, it is heparan sulfate. So this is a gag or a protein. This is a proteoglycan, okay? This is a proteoglycan. Now this heparan sulfate uh, will bind with signaling molecules. Signaling molecules here, they are referring to antithrombin and factor 10A. Uh, do you guys still remember what is factor 10A and antithrombin? I'm not sure if you took them in here, but you might, and I think you, you can remember them. Uh, anyways, these, uh, the proteoglycan, heparan sulfate, will bind with a signaling molecule the, to alter their function, which means that the binding of antithrombin, this blue box, when it binds to the proteoglycan, there will be a uh, conformational change of antithrombin. You see this blue box, how it, how does it change? It, it changed that, uh, basically. So the binding of antithrombin to proteoglycan uh, in the ECM will alter the conformation of antithrombin. So when antithrombin now is activated, let's say now when, uh, when there's a conformational change of antithrombin, in other words, it's activated. When it's activated, it will bind to the uh, blood clotting factor, 10A, it will bind to uh, factor 10A, okay? Uh, preventing clotting. So now we don't have the clotting to uh, occur. So what 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 this uh, image is saying basically, the uh, this line is the proteoglycan. When antithrombin binds to it, it results in conformational change. So antithrombin will be activated. 
When antithrombin is activated, it will bind to factor 10A, this purple thingy. It will bind to factor 10A, therefore prevent clotting. Prevent clotting. This is the first function. The other function of proteoglycan, again, this is the proteoglycan. Proteoglycan. This uh, or um, red line in the middle is a protein. And we have here a lipoprotein lipase. Lipoprotein lipase is an enzyme. Okay, it's an enzyme that converts tri, um, what what they would they call tri um, triglycerides. Okay, um, they are converted to fatty acids. Okay, so lipoprotein lipase is an enzyme that converts triglycerides to fatty acids. So how is this related to to proteoglycans? Now this proteoglycan again, the uh, this line I'm drawing on, the when the lipoprotein lipase binds to it, again it will be activated. So those are activated lipoprotein lipases, and wh whenever a triglyceride come to this those uh, activated enzymes or lipoprotein lipases, they will be degraded into fatty acids. So the same thing here, but in words, heparan sulfate is a proteoglycan this line here, okay? Uh, they will bind to the enzymes in the ECM and the extracellular, again, GAGs and proteoglycans are found in the extracellular matrix. So here they are giving an example, lipoprotein lipase. Uh, it hydrolyzes triglycerides into fatty acids, okay? Triglycerides into fatty acids, which then diffuse into the muscle cells and give them energy. So those are two functions of proteoglycans. Uh, we have, uh, there is many more, I guess, um, but uh, just know uh, those for, uh, for now. Okay, for this lecture, just know those um, two functions of proteoglycans. Um, okay, now let's move to the synthesis of gas. Synthesis of gas. In this case, um, example is chondroitin sulfate. Um, what do you need to know about this lecture? The doctor rushed through it. Thus, the things you have to know that in order to form a gag, you need a an activated sugar. You know that gags are made of disaccharides. Those disaccharides are long chains of carbohydrates or sugars. Now, before you form these, before those disaccharides are formed, we, we need a, an activated sugar. Now, this let's um, see this image here. We have a glucose and you, something called UDP, uridine biphosphate. Now this uridine biphosphate, we need it to activate the sugar. What sugar in this case, it's glucose. So UDP um, is needed to activate the sugar. So here we have UDP glucose. And then we can do whatever we want uh, in, the, in our body to form a gag. In this case, we have UDP glycuronic acid, which is an acidic, um, acidic sugar. So now we can make gags. But before that, just know that the UDP, uridine diphosphate, is needed to activate the glucose or any sugar. And then we can make the glycosamino glycans right here. Okay. Now this uh, all of this is done in the in the ER, in the endoplasmic reticulum. For this image on the right, uh, it's the same as I discussed with the protoglycan thing. Okay, the uh, this picture here, where here. It's the same as the, this, but uh, that one is more complex. Let's just you know, take the general idea of this picture. We have a, this green things are the proteins. And then at the end, I'll focus it at the end, we have the, the gag, this is the gag, the purple and the blue um, square and circle. And this gag is bound, is bound to the tetrasaccharide bridge. Remember the tetrasaccharide bridge, which is composed of glucuronic acid, galactose, galactose, and xylose, and it's attached to serine. It's basically the same thing here, okay? And just know for the glycosaminoglycan uh, synthesis, you need an enzyme called glycosyl transferase. Just memorize this uh, enzyme, okay? Glycosyl transferases. So what do you want, what do you need to know about this slide? that we need UDP, uridine diphosphate, to activate the sugar. This is the first thing. Um, second thing, the enzymes 
or the enzyme, actually, it's only one needed for glycosyl amino glycan synthesis is called glycosyl transferase. And the picture on the right, it's the same thing as I discussed uh, previously. Okay. Okay, now synthesis of chondroitin sulfate, it's the same as the previous slide, uh, as the previous slide does. Here there are, there are organelles. So here there are more details. We have a nucleus in the cell. We have an ER in the plasma reticulum. We have ribosomes. Now those ribosomes, uh, first of all, the proteins are formed in those ribosomes. We have first of translation of core protein. Translation means mRNA, the proteins, right? This happens in the ribosomes only in the plasma reticulum. Then we have addition of xylose. Remember the xylose and the, um, uh, what is it called, the cricuronic acid? Those basically form the tetrasaccharide bridge. Tetrasaccharide. Linker or bridge. Which, connect, which connects the gag to the protein. Um, then we have addition of two galactoles. Again, it's the same here. It's for the formation of tetrasaccharide bridge. And then we have, a C, this CS is, is the proteoglycan. It's another name for, for, uh, for proteoglycan. Uh, so step number five. Uh, there will be a proteoglycan polymerization. There will be addition of the first. What's that? I forgot the name of this one. I, uh, N acetyl galactosamine. Okay. Then they will go to the Golgi, and the Golgi will secrete vesicles. Those vesicles will uh, secrete the proteoglycans. So those are proteoglycans, proteoglycans, which are basically a gag with a protein. That's it. This is how um, proteoglycans are formed in the cells. Okay, so proteins are formed in the ribosomes and the endoplasmic reticulum. Then we take this protein, we link it to a gag through the tetrasaccharide bridge. Okay, this bridge uh, composed of glycuronic acid, galactose, galactose, and xylose. And then xylose will bind to serine of the protein. And then uh, they will go to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi will release vesicles. Those vesicles, they will uh, secrete or release the uh, proteoglycans into the extracellular matrix. Uh, again, they are saying here that the proteoglycans, they form aggregates with hyaluronic acid synthesized on the cell membrane. Uh, that's it for this slide. Mm. Okay. The next concept, the next idea is degradation of extracellular gags. Now, um, our body, you have to know that our body is continuously making glycosaminoglycans. And those glycosaminoglycans, uh, at some point, they, will, they have to be degraded. So they are degraded, and then we make a new ones, and so on. So what's the process of degradation? How is it degraded uh, in our cells? Okay, so let's focus on this image. Here we are trying to, we are trying to know how gags are destroyed. Okay, how to get rid of them when the lifespan uh, is خلاص, yeah, they they have to die and then our body makes new ones. So what's the process? What are the steps? First of all, here uh, here we have the gags. They will um, enter the cell by a vesicle, so by endocytosis. A vesicle will form containing the gags. And then a, a lysosome from the Golgi apparatus will come. And then the vesicle, this vesicle, will join or will fuse with the lysosome. And we know that lysosomes contain enzymes, They're called lysosomal enzymes. So when this vesicle containing the gags fuses with the lysosomes, we have the enzymes here they will enter to the gags and then they will destroy the gags. That's basically how um, how gags are destroyed. Now, what's the problem in this uh, process? What's the problem? Um, that uh, sometimes when uh, the lysosomes come, okay, the lysosome, there is deficiency of enzymes. When there are deficiencies of enzymes, what will happen? The gags will not be degraded, and therefore it will it will lead to um, gags accumulation. 
when the gags are accumulated, what would happen? A disease will, will occur. So th those, diseases, those diseases are called mucopolysaccharidosis. So again, um, lysosomal stress diseases, they result from defects in the lysosomal enzymes responsible for metabolism of gags. Now, when the, these specific diseases are called MPS or mucopolysaccharidosis, the, uh, those diseases will lead to accumulation of gags, accumulation of gags within the lysosomes of affected cells. All these diseases are autosomal recessive, except Hunter. We will talk about the diseases in the next slide. And they are chronic diseases. Uh, yeah, that's it basically so. Just to make sure you guys get it. Uh, we have a lysosome. Okay, lysosome. That contains enzymes. Okay, enzymes. Now, and we also have a vesicle, a vesicle containing gags. Now, when the gags come into the vesicle, the vesicle will fuse with the lysosomes, um, and then the enzymes will degrade, the enzymes, the lysosomal enzyme will degrade uh, gags. However, when we have deficiency, deficiency in, lys in the lysosomal enzymes, they will cause a disease. This disease is called MPS, mucopolysaccharidosis, and we will talk about them in the next slides. So those are the diseases. So before you panic, uh, it's an easy uh, slide, don't worry. So what you just focus with me on uh, what do you have to know from this slide? So first of all, here you have the mucopolysaccharidosis, which are the diseases we talked about. We have a deficiency in lysosomal enzymes. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so let's say this is a gag. This is a gag, okay? This is a glycos minor glycan. This gag is composed of um, repeating uh, units of disaccharides and they, they have sulfates, sulfur groups, okay? We don't care about what gag is, is this. It's just a general gag. Now, this is the process, this process here. Those uh, steps are for the degradation of degradation of gags, of the gag, of this gag specifically. So we need lysosomal enzymes, by enzymes, right? Now those enzymes, we have two of them and you have to memorize them, okay? So first one, if you have the hydronate sulfatase and hydronodase. The first one, do you see those sulfur groups? When gag is destroyed, the lifespan is done. It has to be um, destroyed. This enzyme, hydronate sulfatase, it removes the sulfur. It removes the sulfur. You see the sulfur here? This, this enzyme removes the sulfur, okay? And then at the next step, the hydronidase will inhibit or, or, or will remove the hydrogenate uh, acid from this uh, gag. So this is the, norm, the normal uh, pathway, let me say, for the gag, uh, gag degradation. However, what if those enzymes, those lysosomal enzymes are deficient or there are no enough uh, enzymes in the lysosome? What would happen? Diseases. Two diseases you have to know, guys. Herler syndrome. Herler syndrome is caused by hydrogenase deficiency. Hydrogenase deficiency, which is this one here. So the deficiency in this enzyme will lead to Herler syndrome. And the other disease is called the Hunter syndrome. Hunter syndrome is uh, caused by hydronate sulfatase, sulfatase deficiency. So what you need to know about these two diseases, the deficient enzyme, what is the deficient, the name of the deficient enzymes, and what are the gags that are affected, which will be in the, um, on the next two slides. But for this, for this one, uh, just know that Hurler syndrome is caused by deficiency in hydrogenase enzyme, and uh, the affected gags are dermatan sulfate and heparan sulfate. Those two gags are affected when we have uh, this enzyme deficiency causing Hurler syndrome. Okay, um, 
The rest, uh, yeah, this Hurler syndrome is also called MPS1 or mucopolysaccharidosis type 1. And Hunter syndrome is called mucopolysaccharidosis type 2. Now, also, there's one small difference between them that you have to know that the Hurler syndrome has, where is it? Yes, this one, uh, corneal clouding. Corneal clouding. However, Hunter, Hunter syndrome does not have, does not have corneal clouding. Where is it? Here, there's no corneal clouding. Now, what is corneal clouding? This one here. This is called corneal clouding. Yes, those are actually mucopolysaccharidosis. Those are diseases, but we have different types of um, mucopolysaccharidosis. So we have type one and type two. Type one is called Hurler syndrome, caused by deficiency of hydrogenase, hydronidase, okay? And the Hunter syndrome, it's type two. Uh, it started to uh, turn into a mess. <laughs> so what do you have to know about this uh, slide? What do you have to know about this slide? Okay, let me tell you. So two important things you have to know about this slide. The name of the disease, Hurler and Hunter. What, so the names of the diseases, what is the enzyme that's deficient? And what are the gags that are, um, what are the gags that are affected? Gags affected. So in the case for Hun uh, Hurler, the, this is the enzyme deficient. And those are the gags affected. And you have corneal clouding, corneal clouding, corneal clouding. Um, yeah, that's it for Hurler syndrome. Just read the rest, just in case. But those are the, the high yield information about uh, Hurler syndrome. Um, for Hunter syndrome, again, you know the enzyme. Know the enzyme deficient. Okay, also know that there is no corneal uh, clouding and um, the, uh, the, the gags affected are the same. Dermatan sulfate and heparan sulfate. That's it. Those are, those are the high lead information you have to know. Uh, just let's read the, uh, the others just in case. Um, Hunter syndrome, uh, the abnormalities seen in Hunter syndrome. Okay, again, uh, physical deformity, mental retardation, and there is an enzyme replacement therapy. Hurler syndrome, on the other hand, we have um, also mental, mental retardation, dwarfing, coarse facial features, upper airway obstruction. Uh, deposition in coronary artery leads to ischemia and early death. And yeah, you can read the rest. Again, this is corneal clouding found in Hurler syndrome. Okay, Hurler syndrome. And those here are the same. Okay, the same thing. They are saying that lysosomal hydrolase deficiencies, obviously the enzymes, the lysosomal enzyme deficiency will lead to accumulation of gags in the tissues. Tissues like liver, spleen, bone, skin, cornea, zenus, and this accumulation of gags, they will cause diseases. What are those diseases called? Mucopolysaccharidosis. Also, they can cause hepatomegaly. Hepatomegaly means enlargement of the liver. Also, enlargement of the spleen, dwarfing, uh, uh, extracellimetric deformities, corneal clouding in case of Hurler syndrome and mental retardation, mental retardation also. Um, yeah, when there's, when there's accumulation of gags, you, you can see uh, oligosaccharides in the urine. Yeah, and that's it. Now those are the mucopolysaccharidosis. So again, mucopolysaccharidosis are caused by accumulation, accumulation of gags. Why there's accumulation of gags due to a lysosomal enzymes deficiency. So what do you have to know about this about this table? So the name of the disease, they are the same, Hurler and Hunter, which is the enzyme the enzyme deficient. Here you have hydrogenase, which removes the hydronic acid, and sulfatase, which removes the sulfate group. The and no the affected gag, they are the same in, in both Hurler and Hunter, dermatan sulfate and heparan sulfate, and also. They are the same here. Um, know that there is corneal clouding in Hurler and no corneal clouding in Hunter. This is the difference between them. And also read the other uh, symptoms just in case. Um, yeah, and you know, know the most important, like for example, mental retardation is important. You have to know because they are the mental retardation is present in all of them. 
Um, other two diseases, I'm not sure if those are high yield, yeah, just, but you know, need know, know them uh, just in case. One is called San Filippo A. San Filippo A is caused by enzyme deficiency of heparan sulfatase. And this is the affected gag. Also, the Morcio, I think this is, the, this is how it's spelled, Morcio A, uh, caused also by deficiency of sulfatase, and those are the gags affected. And you can just read the, the, the rest of these symptoms. Also, here you have mental retardation, hyperactivity, it affects the skin, the brain, the lung, and so on. And the more QA, it also has corneal clouding, yeah, and so on. So for this table, the most important that you know those two diseases, Hurler and Hunter, what's the enzyme defect, and what are the affected gags, and uh, the symptoms, I told you to uh, just know the high yield symptoms, like corneal clouding and mental retardation. For the other two diseases, know them just in case, uh, the, or the enzyme defect and the affected gout. Like that's it for proteoglycans. We are done with proteoglycans. Um, is everything good till now? So I, so I can move to glycoproteins, the last part. So for uh, proteoglycans, if, uh, is everything yeah, good? Okay, great, great. Fine. The last part is glycoproteins. Oops. Okay. Fine. Glycoproteins. So let's um, let's break the, the word again. Glycoproteins. So glyco means carbohydrate. And protein is a protein. Okay, so we have a, here a carbohydrate attached to a protein. This one is very simple, guys. I mean, it's going to be, I mean, inshallah, understandable. So glycoproteins, we have a carbohydrate that is bound to a protein, and we have something in the middle, as usual. Um, do you see all of this? I mean, I'm going to explain it on these uh, pictures. Um, so again, uh, we have a glycoprotein, glycoprotein. Now the glycoprotein is formed by carbohydrate, carbohydrate bound to a protein. But again, we have something in the middle. What are those things? Bonds. What are these bonds called? Um, let me choose the color. Uh, okay. No, that's not clear, right? We have N glycosidic bond and all glycosidic bond. So we have those two bonds. They attach car a carbohydrate, a sugar, to a protein, forming glycoproteins, forming a glycoprotein. Now, what's the difference between N glycosidic bond and then O glycosidic bond? The difference is very simple. The N glycosidic bond. Here you have N acetyl glucosamine. Uh, this is the carbohydrate. Let me go to in red. So this is the the car the carb group, the carbohydrate or the sugar, and this is the protein. And they are bound through N glycosidic bond. How do you know this is N and not O? Uh, it's basically because of the asparagine. So uh, when we have a carbohydrate attached to a protein by asparagine. This is N glycosidic bond. However, in, in the O glycosidic bond, right, and on the right side, on the other image, the O glycosidic bond, we have the carbohydrate again. This is the protein, and it's attached through threonine. Threonine. So the difference is very simple. The N glycosidic bond, the N glycosidic bond, um, we have in the middle uh, asparagine, ASN. And for the O glycosidic bond, we have threonine or serine. So actually, let me add the page again. Oh, yeah. Very, very quickly. Okay, carbohydrate attached through um, um, bounded to a protein. Okay, protein. If the and this if this bond, if the bond in the middle is uh, formed by or 
the asparagine asparagine or the asparagine is, is involved here so this is this is n glycosidic bond n glycosidic bond and the same thing carbohydrate bound to a protein if it's the uh, if it's the of uh, what's it called the uh, threonine threonine okay threonine or serine then we say those or this bond in the middle is all glycosidic bond or glycosidic bond this is the only difference you need to know guys this is that's that's it for this slide okay so basically all this uh, paragraph uh, i summarized to you here so carbohydrate attached to a protein by asparagine this is called in glycosidic bond if a carbohydrate attached to a protein by threonine or serine, uh, it's called all glycosidic bonds. Uh, that's it. First, let's read in uh, just in case. So glycoproteins, glycoproteins, they are they consist of proteins covalently linked to carbohydrates. Now those uh, so proteins with carbohydrates, we have bonds between them. Those bonds are called glycosidic bonds, N and O, and we have to differentiate uh, between the two of them. Um, here they are saying that post-translational attachment of carbohydrates to proteins, so formation of glycoproteins is important in biochemical function and so on. Okay, uh, those are the main sugars found in glycoproteins, like glucose, galactose, mannose, fructose, and so on. Just to read them, though, uh, just to read them. No need. They are not in their low yield. Um, Again, here, the, this point, they are saying that carbohydrates are linked to a protein through two types of bonds, and we know the difference. So N glycosidic linkage is through the amide group of asparagine. So when you see asparagine, this is N. Okay, how would you remember this? Uh, actually, I, I would use the, the ASN um, shortcut of asparagine. So asparagine uh, is the same as ASN. So ASN. Actually, and how are you? How do I remember this? I take the N, so that's why asparagine is found in N glycosidic bond. Um, in the O glycosidic linkage, we have serine or threonine. Um, most proteins are secreted where uh, secreted or bound to the plasma membrane. Okay, and they are modified to carbo carbohydrate attachment. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. So those are the high yield information you have to know. The types of bonds. And the amino acids, uh, the asparagine, the, the threonine, and the serine found in each um, type of bond. Um, glycoproteins of the ECM. So glycoproteins and the ECM. Okay. So we just know that from this slide, I want you to know the three types of three types of uh, glycoproteins: of fibronectin, laminins, and integrins. Now, fibronectin. fibronectin is a glycoprotein. It is found in the ECM. It attaches cells It attaches cells to the extracellular matrix, except type 4. So let me go back to the, to, the, to the image, this one. Where is fibronectin? Fibronectin, I think it was somewhere here. Where is it? I'm trying. Yes, this is fibronectin. So this is fibronectin. Fibronectin, again, it's a glycoprotein that binds the cells to the ACM. That's the function of fibronectin, and it's a glycoprotein. That's new. that's what you need to know about fibronectin. Um, so again, fibronectin is a glycoprotein. It attaches cells to extracellular matrix, except type four. Type four requires laminins as an adhesive proteins. It requires laminins as an adhesive proteins. Um, Okay, so those are the laminins. Laminins are required for type four collagen. Um, what else? The basal lamina is called type four matrix, okay. And lastly, you have to know the integrins. You know what are integrins? They are the adhesive molecules. Adhesive molecules that I showed you guys uh, at the beginning, the, uh, that integ the integrins that Attach the basement membrane to the endothelium. So let's say we have an endothelium here. Endothelium, those are cells. And uh, we have a basement membrane here. This is the basement membrane. And between them, 
we have the integrands that with the red thing, okay, with the red color. Those are integrands. So what's the function of integrands? They uh, allow the attachment of basement membrane or the endothelium or the cells to the basement membrane. They also mediate the interaction between e uh, the ECM and the intracellular uh, cytic skeleton. So the same thing. So just remember that integrins are adhesive molecules. So three glycoproteins you have to know, fibronectin, <coughs> sorry, fibronectin, uh, laminin, and integrins, and they are all found in the extracellular matrix. That's it. Yeah, the last slide. Um, mm, this slide, guys, yeah, I'm not sure why, how is this related to this lecture, but I'm gonna explain it anyways. Proteins distinct for lysosome tagged with nano 6 phosphate. What do you have to know about this uh, slide? We have a protein. Uh, obviously, we are in the endoplasmic reticulum, right? The, in the ER. We have a protein. This protein is bound to a carbohydrate. So this is called glycoprotein. Do you see this in the middle? This is what? Asparagine. Now, when you see asparagine, which type of uh, bond is this? Is it N or O? Exactly. How do you remember this? With the end of the asparagine. Uh, thank you, Kareem. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so it's an uh, N, a glycosidic bond. Then they will move to the Golgi. This glycoprotein, this glycoprotein will move to the Golgi. In the Golgi, uh, what will happen? The mannose, we have here a mannose group. Okay, this mannose will be phosphorylated. So we have phosphorylated mannose. When this man, when this mannose is phosphorylated, uh, it will bind to a receptor called mano six phosphate receptor. And when this uh, attachment occurs, what will happen? A vesicle will form. So when the phosphate group of mannose bind to the receptor, a vesicle will form. If this uh, so um, this transport vesicle will contain the glycoprotein, and then uh, it's an extra step. You don't have to know it, but there is here, and then here we have entrance of um, hydrogen hydrogen uh, atoms. So inside the vesicle will be more acidic. So now the phosphorus will be the phosphate group will uh, will be released, okay, due to the hydrogen uh, entrance, and then um, and then this uh, glycoprotein will uh, go to the lysosomes. Now we have a problem here. So this is the normal, this, what I explained is the normal um, process of this uh, nano 6 phosphate. However, when we have a, a uh, when the Golgi cannot phosphorylate mannose, okay, uh, a disease will form, which is called the eye cell disease. This eye cell disease is caused by deficiency of the ability to phosphorylate mannose. So when there is no phosphorylation of, of mannose, when there is no phosphorylation of mannose, what will happen? The, the mannose cannot bind to the, to the receptor and therefore the vesicle will not be formed. And then the uh, glycoprotein will not go to the lysosome. Therefore we have what? Lysosomal, lysosomal enzyme deficiency. Enzyme deficiency. And this is this will lead to a disease called mucolipidosis. Uh, so eye cell disease is caused by deficiency in the ability to phosphorylate mannose. If we cannot phosphorylate mannose, we, uh, the mannose cannot bind to the receptor, so a vesicle will not be formed. So the enzyme here, in this case, it's a glycoprotein. It will not go to the lysosome. Therefore, we have lysosomal uh, enzyme deficiency leading to a disease called mucolipidosis. It's characterized by, this disease is characterized by skeletal abnormalities, restricted joint movements, coarse facial features, and severe psychomotor impairment, or basically the, uh, yeah, the, the movement of uh, the patient will be uh, abnormal. And death usually occurs by eight years of age. That's it for this slide. Um, and actually we are, we are done. Does anyone have any question? For everything about this lecture. You are welcome, guys. Please don't leave. Uh, just please, guys, uh, scan this QR code. I appreciate if you um, uh, give me your feedback, please. It will uh, help me, really. So please scan it and um, 
yeah, write your feedback, uh, your feedback. It won't take more than five minutes. And yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, that's it for me.